Hi, I'm just going to talk us through some of the processes for the advent calendar. I'm not an expert, I just had a little think and I think well, if, you, if you're not watching this video it means you've got your own ideas and that's fine. If you are watching it you might be a little bit anxious and trying to think of how to go about it. So I've thought of three kind of ways. The first is you can, this is something I did with the NHS, to clap for the NHS, I did the rainbow thing over here. So you can essentially use your window as a canvas and put paint on it. Now I wouldn't use any old paint, you might have to Google it. I think you can mix poster paints with um, a bit of water and something else, but you'll need to Google that. But what I happen to have was these chalk pens, which are brilliant. Now if you use your chalk pen and sort of pump it out, you get a pool of paint, because it's quite hard to draw straight onto window. But if you get a pool of paint, on a plate you can use a paintbrush and use it as ordinary paint and that just wipes off so what you can do for the kind of stained glass window effect is you can use something like washi tape or electrical tape or even masking tape now that's quite a pale look but depending on how much paint you use how thick you use it whether you water it down you can really get this color made solid and you can layer it up so that's quite fun for just a simple design using sort of stained glass idea, maybe a central motif, a big star, and don't forget your number. So that's one approach. And if you find some glass paints, um, remember glass paints might be specifically sold as glass paints because they're permanent, so you don't want to put those on your window. So you need to work out if something's water soluble and washable. Then there's other two other techniques that I can think of and that's basically, again, the principle of stained glass with a black paper idea. Now, my windows, as you can see, have got like these um, segments, panels, but the actual glass on the inside is smooth. So I can, I don't know if that's the same throughout Bowen or whether your windows are different. So I could do a picture across the whole thing, but what you need to think of is from the outside, those crosses will be interrupting your design it probably doesn't matter but you could use the, sh the panels to think of different a patchwork of little images which looks really cool so you've got two principles and they both involve silhouettes you can either cut out designs and just put it on your window like I just cut out this little house you could do a whole scene of houses and trees and snow and the light from your window would just shine through that. So you're thinking of independent little motifs that could go on your window. Or you can think of the black as being a frame. So what I did here earlier is, what I'm gonna show you now, is this technique of a really rough and ready stained glass. Now all I did, if you're thinking about that for your own window, Obviously, the bigger the piece of paper or card, the bigger the image, the bigger the impact. You could stick a few pieces together. This is just black sugar paper. But tissue paper is a really good um, translucent, semi-translucent colour, which is going to give you such a lovely effect from the outside. And the great thing is, any pencil lines or mistakes, you're not going to see. So it's going to be, have a lovely high impact. So, when that's against light, it comes alive. Now, if you haven't got tissue paper, but you've um, made the mistake like we have of being seduced by the offers for Quality Street tin sweets, and you don't think they're gonna last till Christmas, you can always give yourself the reason to open that tin of Quality Street and get all those little colored pieces of cellophane. And um, I, I think that's a great reason. I, I think you're justified. So anyway, you've got a design. The main thing when you're thinking designs that you're cutting out is think simple and with borders that are not going to make it fall apart. Can you see that there? It's me. The white shows up. So, so Christmas trees. Oh no, that's a stocking. Christmas trees. Angels. And I'm just going to talk you through really, really quickly. So... Can you see me drawing this? So I'm just doing a white pencil. You can do it with a lead pencil, but I'm just going to see if I just drew something really simple, like a star. 
Now I'm going to make this a shooting star to give it a bit more um, interest. So I'm just going to do a shooting bit off there. The main important bit is you need a border that's sturdy enough to keep the picture constant. It doesn't matter too much. I'm going to do something like, hmm, that could work, couldn't it? Does that look okay? So you're just thinking nice simple designs. I think I'm going to make that a bit straight. Anyway, you get the idea. Then you need a really good sharp craft knife, a Stanley knife, a cutting board, and I'll just show you the star, I think. So I think that's it. So I have cut out a really, really simple shape. But you can see you've got a frame to work with. A couple of things I should have said is that if you're really anxious about design, cookie biscuit cutters, I nearly said cookie, but I'm not an American. Biscuit cutters have got really good shapes that you can draw around or give you an idea. A little, uh oh, a little Scandi horse there. That even if you just filled your window with stars or snowflakes, that would be amazing. Look gorgeous. You couldn't go wrong. Okay, so now I've got to this point when I've got a template. Now you can still see my lines, which I've done in a white pencil. It doesn't matter which side you do in this case. But remember, if you are doing your number as part of your design, you must make sure it's the right way around. I have got pre-cut numbers and letters that work gave me actually they're about this size i should have brought them in um so if anyone would like just some pre-cut numbers to have next to their design and keep the design separate from the number do that just give me a call okay so we've got to this point now depending on whether you're a tidy person or a messy person there's two ways of doing this I just literally slapped the glue on, tore bits of tissue paper and built it up. It's not perfect, there's blue going into the candle, there's red coming down. It really doesn't matter, so it's quite a torn, layered, mixed effect. Alternatively, you can, once you've got your stencil, you could draw around it onto the tissue paper and making sure you've got enough margin you could then cut it very neatly so you've got a solid block of colour. But the main thing is, the great thing about PVA is even if this is a bit flimsy and a bit fragile, and particularly if you're doing on a lovely big piece of paper, the PVA dries in a coating that makes it all much more firm. So even if it feels flimsy while you're doing it, if you leave it to dry, you'll be fine. So I'm going to start by slapping on some glue. Now, tissue paper, I've been um, reliably informed, you can get a pack of mixed colours in the pound shop, which is brilliant. Um, I bought a shed load from Baker Ross because I will always use it. I think it was about £5.99. Um, so if you want to get together with friends and sort of share the materials, that's a great idea. So I've got a nice, this is PVA glue, normal PVA. Now, then I've got my tissue paper. I think I'm going to make my star white. And I'm literally going to just tear off a chunk. Now, for the people who've got design ideas, this might fill you with um, horror if I do this so haphazardly. But then you put on your tissue paper. It doesn't matter how messy it is because it sort of dries and shrinks tidy and you can cut anything off at the end. But then, if you're layering it up, you can just add layers, that makes it stronger. And it also means you've got, um, you can have rainbow effects, you can blend something maybe from dark green to light green to yellow to white and have lovely sort of sunrise effects, if you, that's what you fancy, if you've got a woodland scene maybe or something like that. So you can see dead easy. I'm gonna make my star go down from yellow, I think. Now you can think stripes, 
I'm obviously doing this super quick, totally indulging my long held desire to be a Blue Peter presenter. Oops, no, I haven't done the hand gluing this. Okay, so here we are getting towards the end. I'm layering up colours. Like I said, you could always just do each panel with that one solid colour. I'm obviously doing this quickly and not with the greatest care. But again, once it's dry, you can trim anything off. And you may find it easier just to use scissors, um, so don't worry. Now, one thing to think about is what's lovely about using tissue paper, if that's the route you decide to take, is that... Um, the colours blend like you would remember your your school art lessons so red and yellow for example make orange so even if you've not got many colours of tissue paper you'll probably still get quite a good colour range if that's how you want to go or go monochrome go black and white or red and black or just white you can the, do you remember cutting out snowflakes out of circles of white paper with the when you fold it all up and cut little like doilies They'd look amazing. Okay, so here's my star. And you can see how effective that is. Just something simple like that on a massive piece of black paper would be amazing, not forgetting your number. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, enjoy any questions. This is only, this is not a directive. This is just to give you some ideas if you're feeling you didn't know where to start. But anything on a window, the other thing I was going to say was, do have a look at it outside because I noticed that in the kitchen it was quite bright, but on our landing I might need to put a spotlight or a lamp near it because there's not enough light to come through. So check it outside, check your hedges aren't too high and have fun. I'm so excited. Happy Christmas! <laughs>